Hi, I'm John Miglosh, and we're continuing in our series, Making Money with Data. Now, last time we talked about data science, but we talked about it from the perspective of what would you be looking for if you're trying to hire a data scientist? Okay, but this time we're going to look at data science itself. Now, some terms really dramatically increase your understanding, but data tack it on in the front of science, I'm not sure it really helps that much, okay? You know, it could be animal science, it could be whatever, but let's think back to the beginning um, sophomore high school biology class, and what was science about? Well, the first thing in the scientific method, if you recall, is one observation. Okay, observation. And that's a key element that we look for in science in general. Now, I just got a text from a friend who's working on the 2010 uh, census data by zip code. And we just got our hands on it and he texts me and he says, how can the city of Rockford, which is about 115,000 in population, how can the city of Rockford zip code only have 86 people and have an average age of 87.9 years old? And I said, no, it's not possible, okay. <laughs> so his observation was great. There's probably not a lot of people that have, you know, sorted the data by, by average age or whatever it is, median age, and most of them are just around 35, you know, no matter what, because there's enough population. Um, but, but anyway, he found it. He's finding out why we don't use five-digit zip as much as we like to use three-digit zip, because when you're doing the marketing, that three-digit gives you a bigger geography, which is more likely to not include these kooky things. Anyway, that's another issue. But, so I wrote him back and I said, that's great. I think what it is, now that's the next part. Number two, with the data science is hypothesis. Okay, so I think the reason that Rockford looks so squirrely is because I know when we, were in, when we worked with the 1990 census, we were looking at the city names and we thought we could just give people the numbers. We just give them, you know, the SCF 606 is Chicago uh, and uh, 532 uh, is Milwaukee, and nobody knows these things. So we had to glue names on them. They didn't come with names in those days. And what we found was, or we found a table with the names, they were all gooped up. So we just took the, the most common city name associated with that zip code number. And it made a nice tidy table, and it you know, worked pretty well, except then it got out into metros and it was a little bit, it, it worked, okay? So I know, the problem is that what it says is Rockford isn't Rockford. And so I texted him back and I said, double check where that might be. I said, you probably got a, an office building or a, uh, a VA hospital. So now, we, now we're designing a test. And I said, the, the thing that's nice about your data is it's in a mapping program. And so test slash experiment. So I said, try an experiment, try and map that baby and see what the perimeter is and compare it with the perimeter of Rockford. <laughs> and what he found was that yes, in fact, it looked like it was a nursing home. It was like one building in the map. Okay, so obviously we, we did that. So now what do we do? Now, how does, how do, this is the part where science usually leaves off. The fourth one might probably be the most important and that is the theory. Because when you have a test, you have a test. So we, what we know is, is that there's a zip code in the 2010s geodemographic data that you're just getting now. We just get our hands on it. Probably most of you haven't even gotten it yet. And we're building zip code, or we're building variables with it. But what we know is, is that there's one that's squirrely. Ah, but we probably could generalize that. And we could probably generalize it and say, you know, watch out for zip codes that have less than a thousand population or a hundred population or something like that. Now, out west, you know, Death Valley, I remember uh, the male to female ratio one time when I was looking at it, in Death Valley was, it was like six people and they were all men. 
So it was like 100% male. It was one of the very rare zip codes. And there was another place way up in Alaska and it had like 100% male. So there's, I mean, we could come up with a, we could come up with a procedure and a formula that would deal with certain anomalous zip codes. Although, you know, if that, if you were marketing uh, chewing tobacco, you might, you know, you might want to go for those. Find those outlying. Not only are they outliers in the data, but they're outliers in the middle of nowhere. And uh, find those guys and you know, sell them mail order cigars or something. Anyway, this theory is our ability to take one or two or five or ten instances of test data and extrapolate it out into what is our market, what is our offer, what's working, what isn't working. This is really the key area of all science is the ability to extend our relatively insignificant test data out into the future, into other situations to generalize, okay? And what's especially problematic about data science is, you know, if you're doing biology, you can see the killer whale come up and and nail that sea lion. <laughs> or, I, or I just watched one with a hawk. The guy lets a mouse loose and in about 30 seconds a hawk comes down and gets it. And there's stuff that you can tell and describe and, and, and stories. Well, you take the zip code data, it's about 50,000 rows uh, for the zip codes and it's about 400 columns of data. And it's nothing, you know, you might have you might have the, the number of mobile homes. We were looking at the number of mobile homes and we mapped it and stuff. And the trouble is, is that there's more map mobile homes in general where there's more people and there's less where there's less people. So that doesn't tell you anything. So you gotta start doing things with the data to generate decent observations and to make this stuff generalizable. And that is the process. It's more difficult with data science than it is with, I think, with most science because it's so, Hype, or so, so theoretical, so abstract. It's more like physics or something than, than, than ordinary biology. And so for the mobile homes, we're taking them and we're gonna say, okay, well, what's the percentage of mobile homes to housing units in general? What's the number of mobile homes per square kilometer? The density of mobile homes. What's the number of mobile homes per, you know, per 10,000 people? And then we'll score that. And so we'll know about you know, the, the, whether there's a lot or the little compared to other things. And when we get into data science, in order to really make money with this data, it's almost better to start with your offer, start with your, with your marketing effort, see what's working, what isn't, and then lay this data on top of it so that you already start with a story. And then from that story, you can connect up the variables, which we're building, come, come see, and, uh, and that's how you make money with data. I'm John Miglosh, have fun with your data.